I invested all my money. I don't have money for a flight home. I don't have money for a hotel. I don't have money for a taxi. I have nothing. You guys cannot do this to me. My life depends on it. And they're like, shocked. So they call the owner on speaker. They're telling him the story. He goes, what? I see, and he's on speaker. Yeah. He said, the guy is here from Scottsdale. Yes, sir, he flew here with his last $500. He goes, give him the party. He goes, that's the guy, that's the type of guy we need. So we clo I closed the deal right there on the spot. Hey guys, welcome back to Driven Channel, and I got a very special guest for you today. And uh, I've been wanting to have this uh, guy here with us. Uh, he's my, my my a good friend of mine. Met him a long time ago, and from far we talked. But uh, we have a lot in com common, as you see the cars back here, and uh, very successful. I'm very proud of you, brother. I'm very proud Thank of you, you brother. Uh, you you inspired me the moment I met you because uh, I was at ten thousand. And I think we used to be kind of neighbors right there. Yeah, and, we and were used, neighbors. And and I was always working out. I, I, yeah. I've always been into the fitness um, uh, thing, and and I would I would be working out, and then I would do cardio, and I would see like a La Ferrari pull out. Then I would see <laughs> another car and another car. I'm a big Ferrari guy, but I would see all these all these cars, McLarens that you would pull out, and and I was like, who is this guy? And then a, a Phantom and and all this stuff. And then I would see you. Uh, I was driving. My my wife has a very good eye. So we're like driving and they're like, hey, that's the guy from the from the from our house, from our place uh, with, with the cars. And and then I see you and then you're like right there outside of, outside of the car. And then I DM you. I remember we, that's how we started talking. Oh, and, yeah. and then I'm like, damn. And then you were very, very nice. And when you came in here, besides all the flash and, and all the all your accomplishments and everything you do, you are a very nice man. Like you, you. you, you come here and and you were like being so cordial, so nice, uh, shaking all my employees' hands, from receptionist to my processing department to my accounting department, uh, everybody. So uh, I, I, from the moment I knew you were a nice guy, but I didn't know this side of you. You're just you're. you're I don't know if the humble is a word, but you're a very, a very nice man that treats everybody the same way. And I think because you are like that. Maybe that's why you've been rewarded with all the stuff that you've accomplished. So Thank you. uh, I just want uh, to tell you how much I appreciate you, how much you motivate me, and uh, how happy I am to have you finally here. And um, and welcome to the show. And, and, and uh, RD, you go by RD. And uh, Wires Only. Why don't we start right there? Who is Wires Only? Like, why why Wires Only? I, I kind of know and kind of have a, an idea of it. But for those that are new to you, yes. why wires only and how did wires only start? Well, it's just like a home. If you want to put down a down payment, what do you have to send? A wire. A wire. So if you want to buy a house, a car, a boat, a plane, you know, we came up with that name, you know, Jamie Foxx and I were kind of joking around like a guy was one day, he was like, hey, I want to, I want to buy a car. Yeah. And he was like, hey, you got to send a wire. And we were like, wires only. You know, we want to make it make the process quick. If you got the money, we we've, we've got the inventory. So it kind of we kind of started off, um, you know, with that name and then turned it into a worldwide brand, and it just kind of exploded with the show on Discovery Channel and Discovery Plus, and was featured on TNT and anywhere you can imagine. You know, we never thought that it was supposed to be uh, going to be this big. Yeah, and and then uh, you are everywhere. You're like every like I went I go to the Laker game courtside you're there like I go I, I go to like the, the the biggest party in town and you're there and you're you're just like every hot spot and, and then you're flying private you have all these exotic cars why are you everywhere and and not only like everywhere but you are always everywhere but in the right seat the best seat and you're always with somebody also that's a big uh, somebody big in whether it's the entertainment space celebrity but you're always in the best spots like is that something that's like part of your job is that it is that important for you is that part of networking mm -hmm. how do you do that and and how do you keep going because it's like every day you have something big going on every day don't you get tired you know a absolutely albert first of all thank you for having me i've been following you for a long time 
I've been watching your lives. I know you see me because you always say what's up in yeah. the lives. Yeah. I always study what you're saying. <clears throat> I always pick up on the things that you are encouraging. Your mentorship program and your students is, you know, the most important thing is you can invest in is your network. Yeah. Who you're around, the right place at the right time. If you are around money, you can make money. Yeah. If you look like money, you can feel like money. You can start to think like money. So I always try to make sure that I'm at the right events, networking, meeting the right people. You know, when we see each other at the Lakers game, you're talking to somebody that could be a friend, a client, or a partner. I'm doing the same. And when I'm at these events, I'm not there for the game. Yes, I like the Lakers, of course. I love sports. But I'm there to meet people. I'm there to network. I'm there to be in the right rooms. I'm there to see who's there, who I can talk to. And I think that's very important. And I know you uh, you preach that a lot on, on your lives and your podcast and in your program about getting yourself around the right people. Yeah. And I think that's very important. And you know, where, where, wherever you live, if you can get around the right person, you can maybe learn one thing from that person that could help your career excel. That one person could open up one door for you. Think about it. We met at the valet at a, at a building. Yeah. And, you know, we were working on different for car deals, m maybe houses and homes and properties and loans and driven events. And it just the, the opportunity is endless once you meet that person. Oh, yeah. Let me call my guy, Albert. Oh, yeah. Let me call RD. Yeah. And then you can just start to build from there. So I think, you know, some of my best relationships I've met people at different events and that's why i think it's so important that you got to be at events you got to be in the mix yeah you gotta you, you gotta kind of do both you gotta work but you gotta be around too because you got you gotta market yourself yeah and what be better way to market yourself than at an event yeah because it's like it when when you're thinking about when you're with somebody and then somebody brings up hey i want to buy real estate i want to get a mortgage loan you're very well connected more probably more than anybody and you're gonna be like albert Albert. I know when somebody's like, I want to get this car that is hard to get. I want to get this exotic that's hard to get, Artie. Absolutely. Wires only. So, like, I think that's the, what you said is very key that you go to events or, or Laker games courtside because courtside you'll find the relationships that you want. You're not going to find them in the bleachers. No. Right? So you go there and you said something very important, very key, that you go to the games not to watch the game. No. Not to watch the game. So that, that that's key. That's very important. So. Yeah. So um, talking about that, what's that relationship that put you on the map? Like when you started, um, and, and maybe before you answer that question, when you grew up, how was your childhood? Were you, were, did you grow up with some money, a little bit of money? And, and how did you make it? Because I know you have a powerful story about a Rolls Royce and how, how you got yeah. started. And, and then somebody put you on the map, which, which uh, can you talk about that? How, how, yeah. you, how you became from a regular uh, RD to like wire only, and then yeah. how, how did all that happen? At the end of the day, like, you know, I'm just a normal guy. You know, I went to I went to military school in North Carolina. I went to one year of college. <clears throat> I was trying to find my direction kind of like everybody else. I got my real estate license, you know, early on. Uh, my parents, you know, were separated, but I spent a lot of time with both of them. They were both amazing. But I was trying to find my way just like anybody. Yeah. And I, I was running a, a resort in Colorado and i that's where i learned all my hospitality dealing with you know clients and guests and the ritz carlton school of ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen and i really really became an expert in hospitality and i loved it but it was a very small town and you know i i, I actually got in the guinness book of records in that town now when you pull into that town you there's a sign that says that the town is in the guinness book of records so i set that up had the Olympic ski team come and do the announcements for the Olympic ski team. We had the, sh the resort was on Oprah twice. So I made the best of the situation, even though I was in a very small town. I was young. You know, I was working 24-7. At one point, I was living in the hotel in a room. Wow. So I would work, go sleep in the hotel, suit back up, and go back to work. And I was working seven days a week. So I would come in at 7 a.m. and I would leave at, you know, around midnight with three or four breaks. And I would do it all over again, including Sundays. But any time that I had off, I was always looking at cars. 
I was like you, I always had a passion for cars. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, did you see this car? What about this car? And I was, I was always trying to do my research to see where I could find the next best car. I was doing my job to the best of my ability, but when I had my time off, I would focus on that. I was like, how can I be an expert on this while I'm learning everything there is to, to know about hospitality? Because looking back at it, I took everything I knew from hospitality and I applied it to my position now. And it skyrocketed our business because people like to be addressed by their last names. They like to know what you like to drink. They like to know, you, you need to know where they like to stay, what they like to eat, what their preferences are, what temperature they like the car, if they want the driver to talk, not to talk. I mean, it's a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I took everything I learned from dealing with those types of guests and I applied it to the business that I'm in today. But I was working seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 11. And I always had one or two cars at a time at the hotel mm -hmm. parked on the side. Like there was two parking spots. Yeah. And I always kept like a G-Wagon or, or something cool there that I would drive and then I would sell. So one day, uh, I, after about four years of being there, I went into the owner's office. I said, I need a day off. And they're like, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to go to to Cali and buy a Rolls Royce. They're like, you're crazy. But if you leave now and you're back tomorrow by like 8 o'clock, go ahead. So I flew to Riverside, well, where the where the auction is here. And uh, I flew into, I think, LAX and then drove down to Riverside. I bought a Rolls Royce at the auction with every penny I had. I drove it back to Colorado. I put it online. It was like one of those penny, like quarter car washes where you scrub it yourself, you know. How'd you save those 300,000 though? From the money, because there was nothing to do. Yeah. So all my salary, like every, I was living at the hotel, so I didn't have a place. So every dollar that I made, you know, running the property, I saved. How long did it take you to save that? Probably three years, okay. Three, okay. three to four years. Uh, and then I was flipping a couple cars at a time while mm -hmm. I was there kind of on the side. Mm -hmm. And I did a few good deals, but I was like, man, I want to do this. I want to do this big one. I want to do a Rolls. So I did my research and I saw these Rolls Royces. I, I, I bought the Rolls. I drove it back to Colorado. It's like 15 hours. I get there. I can't wait. You know, I suit up. I go straight to work. Haven't even slept. I can't wait to, to clean up the car and put it on, put it on, uh, on eBay. It was like uh, eBay or Auto Trade or something at the time. So I clean it up. I put it online. The next day, a guy calls me from O'Gara. He's like, hey, I want to buy that Rolls. I'm like, yeah, there's like, I'm thinking it's a fake call. He goes, I'm the general manager. I was, I was coming there to buy that car, but I was late. I got stuck in traffic. And I was like, I, I think I paid 300 something. I told him some crazy number, 400 or 399. Yeah. 399,000. He goes, great. I'll take it. He's like, I have it sold. I didn't even have wire info at the time. He goes, give me a bill of sale with your wiring instructions and you know, I'll, I'll take the car. So I went next door to the bank. I said, hey, guys, I need my wire info. They're like, oh, no, son, you're being scammed. Little tiny bank, one branch. They said, oh, no, this is a scam. I said, no, I sold the Rolls Royce. They're like, oh, man. They're like, get out of here. I said, no, I did. It's outside. You want to see it? They're like, okay, here's the info. I give it to the guy. He goes, okay, check your account soon, and it'll be there. You know, coordinate the transportation. Thank you. I hang up the phone. 30 minutes later, the money's there. And that's kind of, I think, what I was making a year at the time yeah. on one deal. So I called one of my mentors, um, Mike Adams, who ran all the Marriott training. Uh, great guy from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I said, Mike, I, I think I just made my whole salary on one car. He goes, that's great. Can you do it again? I said, I, I don't know. I think so. He goes, do you love it? Do you love, is that what you love? And not only do you love it, but can you make money at it? Did you just get lucky or can you do it again? Can you make this a business? I said, absolutely, I, I, I know I can do it again. So he's like, if you wanna you know, give it a shot, go give it a shot. So I went into the owner's office. I said, look, I'm gonna hire a new manager. I'm gonna train them for 90 days I'm, and I'm gonna go pursue cars full time. And they're, like, and, and they're like, fine, go ahead. So I trained a new manager, taught him everything I knew. He, he, knew he did a great job and uh, I, loaded everything I had up in the car and I drove to Scottsdale. I was like, I just want to go to warm weather, Albert. I was like, it's freezing here. It's 75 and sunny. It's the closest place. And I knew it was a big, you know, big car community. So 
It's the first time I'll never forget. I walked into Mastro's for the first time. And I saw, I, I hear you tell these stories a lot. I saw Rolls Royces lined yeah, up yeah, yeah. like five at a time. Yeah. Everyone had a Ferrari, Rolex, Paddock. You know, everyone looked amazing, looked in shape, looked great. I was like, man, this is it. Like, I want to live here. So there were the, the Mastro's, the original Mastro's is in Scottsdale from the Mastro family. And it was called, one of them was called Ocean Club. And I was like, I need an office around here. This is the spot. It was in the Scottsdale Air Park. So I'm driving around I'm looking for hangers. I'm looking for hangers. I'm like, you know what? I want to be in a hangar, you know, so I can have planes and cars. Yeah. So one day I'm sitting in the back of a hangar and I see this G5 pull up. Because you could see like, like Santa Monica Airport, if you're parked mm -hmm. kind of outside, you can see the hangars and the planes. And I see this G5 pull up. And at this time I hadn't, wasn't flying private on that level of jet. Yeah. You know, I wasn't exposed or around that type of lifestyle because I was in a one stoplight town. All these Range Rovers pull up, Escalades pull up, all these people get out, security. I'm like, what is going on? And there's three hangars and the plane pulls right in the middle. So I waited for everyone to get off and the two hangars were for lease on the side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I saw the guy get off the plane. He had a big, long red beard. His name's Red Rob. And I said, hey man, I'm the biggest car guy in the game. I'm gonna, I have all these exotics. I need these hangars. I want to lease these hangars. He said, no. He said, what kind of plane do you have? I said, I don't have one yet. Well, I'm gonna have one. He goes, well, you know, these planes, they buy fuel from the fuel farms and the fuel farms are in the ground. So we make money on the fuel and the hangar rent. So if you don't have a plane, get out of here. And I was like, damn. I was like devastated. I was like, I, cause I knew I didn't want to be a traditional store, but I wanted somewhere cool and, and dope. So I'm like, man, I'm praying to God. I'm like, God, come on, please help me find a way. But I kept running into Rob everywhere. Anytime I went anywhere in town, I ran into him. I said, bro, how about this? I said, let me make you a deal. How about any time yourself or the owner of the plane, Ron, want to come in and take a car, take one for the weekend. He goes, me too. I said, yeah, you too. He goes, huh? He goes, let me get back to you. He calls me back. He said, so you're telling me anytime on the weekend I can come in and take a car? I said, yeah, you can take one and your boss can take one. You know, for the weekend, come in Friday, return on Monday. He's like, what do you got? I said, Ferraris, Rolls Royce, Lamborghinis, that kind of thing. I didn't have anything at the time, <laughs> but I just told him, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm going to have. I'm going to yeah. be the biggest in the world. He's like, okay, I'll get back to you. He calls me back. He's like, look, I think I got this deal done. Even though you don't have a plane and you're going to put cars in here and that's not what it's for, if you let us come in and take a car like you said, we're going to put that in the lease and we're going to send it over. So I tell my uncle, uh, I said, look, I found some hangers. You have a few cars and some stuff you want to put inside. We can split them. You pay half, I pay half. He goes, oh, man. He goes, I love that. He goes, I'm in. He goes, me and you will chop it up together. I said, great. So I called the guy. I said, yeah, I'm in. I got it. Let's go. Personal guarantee, like $150,000 deposit, no problem. TI, when well, I'm building the place out, I'm going crazy. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. You, you, I, you remind me of me. Yeah, I wanted it to look like your office, like this office. Insane. I'm thinking gym, showers, you know, perfect, uh, you know, uh, perfect setup. Because I, I knew if I was in the air park, I would be what? surrounded by yeah yeah money yeah if i'm in the air park what do, what's in the air park jets what do people that have jets they have businesses they're successful they're entrepreneurs i didn't want to be on scottsdale road and temp by tempe with all the other dealers mm -hmm. i wanted to be where the real money was yeah because if i knew i was around jets people that have jets like cars and spend money on cars so i would be in the right position like i always study you and hear you saying getting to the right rooms meeting the right people investing in yourself investing in your network so i was thinking to myself i want to be in the right spot it's all about where you are so they come back they send me the deal i send them all the money i have i had to get a place obviously a house I get my dealer license bond insurance you know i go to office depot i get a desk i put it together myself file cabinets get the sign take the pictures get the license i'm like man i'm ready to go now i have a few cars i have them inside so I go to my uncle and I said, listen, it's, you know, 
it's the, the following month it's the first it, you know we're supposed to both kick in like whatever it was and we have to pay your first last security deposit a little bit of ti it's like a couple hundred grand or whatever yeah and he's like oh he's like i'm not doing that he said like, i'm out hangs up i'm like what do you mean you just told me to get i just signed a five-year deal personal guarantee what do you mean you're out you can't be out we're i can't afford this on my own i call the guy back i said look my uncle that was doing this i'll call the property owner i said my uncle that was he, they said i don't care he said we're gonna sue you and kick you out this is on you figure it out hangs up so now the partner who i thought was going in the building with me he's out i don't have any money left just a little bit so i'm trying to figure this out like i'm, I'm like what am i going to do i was going to this little little um place called the chop shop and my friend was the owner i became friends with them because i went there all the time they have the best food shakes everything after you work out go there get a nice get a nice snack and he was like man i was like man i tell him what happened he's like here man here's some cards use these until you get on your feet for meals yeah he was like just use these i said i, I got a new spot but i'm gonna have to leave he's like oh man i'm sorry he's like where is that spot I said, it's right down the street in the Scottsdale Air Park. He says, oh, man. He, he's like, I'm going to come by. I'm going to come by and see it. I totally forgot. So I'm like, all right, cool, man. Have lunch. I'm devastated. Head back to the office. I'm like, man, it's over. You know, I'm literally thinking about packing it up. Three, four Suburbans pull up. The guy from the restaurant gets out. I'm like, man, what's up, bro? He's like, walks in, all these people. He's like, hey, man, can I look around? He's one of those guys that's, like, really amped up. He's like, hey, I want to show these guys these hangers. I want to show them everything around here. I'm like, whatever, bro, go ahead. I'm just, like, down in the dumps. A lady walks in my office, and she goes, hey, I'm Lauren from Maxim Magazine. I said, that's cool, man. I love, you know, was a fan of Maxim growing up, great yeah. magazine. It's like, I don't want any magazines. She goes, no. She goes, Super Bowl's coming to Scottsdale, to Phoenix. And we're looking for a place to do the Maxim Magazine Hot 100 Super Bowl party. And as you know, Maxim Magazine has the biggest party for Super Bowl every year still to this day. I jump out of my seat. Hey, I'm RD. How are you? How can I help you? Let me show you around. She goes, these places are, yeah, I said, these places are mine. I have these two. Boom, boom, boom. She said, I said, what's the budget for this? She goes, 500000 Some crazy number. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is life changing. I said, I'll be your boots on the ground. I'll take care of everything, whatever you need. She goes, because it was on a live taxiway, kind of like where this plane's parked behind us, mm -hmm. we had to get a permit to shut down the, the taxiway. She goes, if you get the permit, we'll give you the party. So I had to get all the people that own all the hangars to sign off on a petition that I had to give to the FAA in Oklahoma to allow us to shut down the taxiway from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., on the Saturday night before the Super Bowl, which is unheard of. Yeah. So I'm going to all these millionaires, billionaires, you know, big guys. Hey, I need to shut down the taxiway. They're like, no way. For what? We're coming in. We're going out. I said, I'm doing the Maxim party. You want to come? Oh, yeah. I would love to come. I said, sign here. Here are your tickets. They said, absolutely. Sign, 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 sign. Like 50 people signed off on this. We send it to Oklahoma. We send it to the air park. The air park approves, gives me the permit. I send a permit to Maxim. Maxim goes, "Oh man, that's great news, but I'm sorry, we're going with we're going with Talking Stick Casino." And they hang up the phone. Now at this point, I really spent all my money because I had to get the permit. I had to give them a deposit for the taxiway in case there was a damage uh, from you know anything happening at the event. I had to do a bunch of stuff and use all my funds to get that permit. I called them back and I said, "Guys, you don't understand, like." this is not going to work we, we we have to do this party here they go no i had 600 bucks left and this was what year <sighs> I, I more or less like 10 years five years yeah something like that and 10 years probably yeah yeah probably 10 years ago but i knew if i got the party not only would i get the capital capital that i needed i would also meet the people i needed to meet yeah that's all I wanted. The money I needed, but I really wanted the connections. That's all I wanted. I wanted to meet the people that were going to be hosting that party, at that party, working the party. 
I've, I go at the time, I don't think Uber was around, I get in a taxi, I go to Sky Harbor Airport, and I fly to JFK. I buy a one-way ticket. And uh, I go to Madison and Fifth, I go right to their office, I get past the first security guy, I go to their floor, I knock on the door. They don't know whether to call security or to let me in. They're like kind of nervous. Yeah. They're like, oh God, what are we doing? The guy from Scott Sales here. I said, I need to meet with everybody right now. I sit him down in the conference room. I said, listen, I don't, I'm not sure what Talking Sick is going to do for you, which is a big, beautiful casino, hotel rooms, everything, like insane. But I'll tell you what I can do for you. I will get you all of your sponsors. I will handle all of your ground transportation. I will personally handle everything from A to Z myself to make sure that this party goes absolutely perfect, just like I got the permit, like I told you I would. I invested all my money. I don't have money for a flight home. I don't have money for a hotel. I don't have money for a taxi. I have nothing. You guys cannot do this to me. My life depends on it. And they're like, shocked. So they call the owner on speaker. They're telling him the story. He owns Shake, Steak and Shake and a bunch of other big, you know, big brands and companies. He goes, what? I said, yeah. and he's on speaker. Yeah. He said, the guy is here from Scottsdale. Yes, sir. He flew here with his last $500. He goes, give him the party. He goes, that's the guy. That's the type of guy we need. Yeah. So we clo I closed the deal right there on the spot. And they got me a hotel. They took great care of me, you know. Flew me home, gave me the, the the deposit check, which was a lifesaver, and then I flew home. So the Tao group flies out. They set up all the tables, do an amazing job. They give me a few tables to sell. I sell them both, I think, for 50000 each. I bring in all the sponsors, Dodge, Johnny Walker, uh, Dos Equis. <clears throat> I'm lining it up. Now they make my office the green room. So just like we came into your big, you know, beautiful office, Imagine everyone having to enter through there. That's, you know, important. I have the one key. Mm -hmm. So now I have Paul McCartney, Jamie, Lil Wayne, Justin Bieber, whoever you could think of is coming through my door. So now everyone's calling me. Hey, can you get this person in? Hey, I need to pick up my cousin from the airport. Hey, I need a bottle of champagne. Hey, can you do this? Can you do that? I'm just taking care of everything left and right. But I knew by using my hospitality skills and hard work, by meeting these people at the party and taking care of everyone, I would get the Rolodex that I needed in those contacts. Yeah. And and these uh, skills, hospitality skills, where where do you think you learn these skills? Is it something you developed or is it something that you learn by doing some sort of stuff? It's definitely from the resort, from Mike Adams, Ritz Carlton, Forbes 100 training. It's all the hospitality training yeah. that you get. And then working at the resort, while it's so important, I talk to so many young people, they're like, oh, I work here, I work there. I said, learn everything there is to know. Because you can take that and apply it, whatever that craft is or whatever that skill is to whatever profession you may want to do in the future, you can use these tools. So suck, soak everything up like a sponge and learn as much as you can. When I was at the resort, I never thought to this day, the training I received, I would use in my everyday yeah. life with celebrities that I deal with now. Yeah. Now, now going to that, you know very wealthy people like billionaires and hundred millionaires, celebrities. Jamie Foxx is one of your, your best friends, right? Yeah, Jamie Foxx is the best. So, so these people, Kim Kardashian, when you delivered the car, yes, uh, you put it on, you had it on on the show. So like these people, how are they different from like an Albert or from like um, somebody that's going to college? Like how how are they very different uh, from a level one percent to a level ten percent? Are they just cool and random? Also, like how are these billionaires, hundred millionaires? How, how are they? Because you deal with them all the time. It, their time is limited. Just like you say, I have a gym at my office for a reason. My barber comes to cut my hair here. Why? Because your time is valuable. Their time is very valuable. And they move the similar same way that you like to move. You get your couple of day workouts in here at the office. You get your hair cut here. I study everything you do because 
you're very into time management and and, and so are these guys yeah. you know their personalities are all different we do, we deal with them all um you know and that requires a lot of work that requires a very special skill set you have to know when to speak when not to speak where to stand not to take out your phone never ask for a picture act like a normal human being with class with the utmost respect move accordingly and you can apply those things with dealing with these people of that caliber it's very important now dealing with with these huge stars when you see a star that you're not working with yet like let's say you go to nobu and then you see a star right there and and you're not working with them yet what's your approach like what are you thinking are you thinking i'm gonna i'm gonna go there i'm not gonna be too aggressive they're gonna think i'm weird um you because you said you know when to ask when not to ask for pictures sure well how do you approach that when you because because now you're a big deal but let's maybe rewind two years before the show uh like how would you approach if you see somebody there that's like another kim kardashian or kanye or drake and you don't know them yet like what, what how do you approach them because i know now it's not now it's different yeah but now before, it's a little bit easier but, eh? <laughs> but, but two, two years ago yes yeah, how say, would you do it say say it was you know two or three years ago i i didn't know as much as i know now now i would i would if someone is at nobu having dinner i would i wouldn't dare approach them because i want to give them i want to be respectful of their space especially if they're eating mm -hmm. but if it is someone that i needed to get in contact with you know i would get in contact with someone in their camp first because they're going to have an assistant they're going to have you know security team they're going to have people that you may be able to get in contact with first inside the camp that may be there that can help you with their approach with something that you may need but i always love to be respectful of their time especially if they're with their family especially if they're having dinner i never want to bother someone like that but if we're in passing or if it's at an event i always will try to work with say an assistant or security detail or a manager or an agent to make the make the right approach but you do sometimes you do have to go for it but i, I never want to interrupt someone's dinner though that's important yeah like what one of the things that growing in, in in business what i learned at first is everybody always goes to the person like like people yeah, just no, they see somebody it. and they jump yeah. on top of them but what i learned early on is like if i want to get their attention don't go to the main star because everybody's uh, like everybody's on them they're going to have a wife, a girlfriend, an assistant, uh, right hand, left hand. Go to them and 100%. introduce to them because nobody's paying attention to them. Yeah. And then they're going to open the gate to the to the real person. Sure. So that's, that's what I started doing early on. But tell me. Um, Very are, important. T tell me when you were. So when you when this happens and you get through this, you you the Rolls Royce story, you have this party, you get to know a lot of people after this. Uh, this this was like more or less 10 years ago, nine years ago. After this, do you never look back? You never have any more financial problems? You never run out of money? Is everything oh, no. perfect from here on? Or, no, or what, absolutely. what happens after absolutely. that? I mean, it's <clears throat> being an entrepreneur, you know, what I was thinking about before coming on this podcast is there's always ups and downs. There's always going to be times in life when you want to quit. The winners are the people that did not quit. I'm no one special. If I can do it, anybody can do it. You just have to keep on swinging. If that's the most important thing that I can say today is just to never, ever, ever give up, no matter what, no matter how hard it gets, no matter if you feel like quitting, no matter if you're whatever you're dealing with, that it's it's better on the other side and that you just have to keep on swinging and you have to keep that mentality. You just cannot quit. Yeah. If I can inspire anybody today, there's been a million times where I thought I wasn't going to make it a million but that's part of being an entrepreneur. You have to get knocked down. And I think maybe I heard this from you. I can't remember. But it's like in the movie where the guy gets knocked down. Yeah. And he's bleeding everywhere. And he just gets right back up. But that's part of being an entrepreneur. That's part of trying to be better every single day. That's part of going to the gym every day. Yeah. You just have to stay consistent. Stay consistent and never give up. Yeah. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be a dog fight. Yeah. It's not Ferraris and Jets. It's a dog fight. Yeah. You have to strap in. It's a dog fight. People don't know you get here first thing in the morning and leave late at night and are 
doing real estate mortgages, escrows, mentoring, coaching, being a dad, having three kids, having a, a wife and beautiful family. People don't understand. They just see, oh, yeah, Albert's in the LaFerraris and the Jets and this and that. But there's so much blood, sweat, and tears yeah, yeah. that goes into it. I think when you do the hard work, like the things you hate, because most of the time I hate the things that I'm doing. Like I, there's certain, there's the, I think 5% of the things that I do I love, but like 95% of the things that I do I hate. But I'm just programmed that I got to do it no matter what. That I just do it becomes normal. And then that's when life becomes easy when you do yes. the hard shit that uh, not a lot of people want to do over and over again, that it becomes easy. So you just get programmed that way and you just roll like that. But go, going back to you, when you, uh, now, the RD of today, like you're, you're, you're on, on top of the world right now. And uh, two years ago, because I, I met you like, I don't know, was it seven years ago or something? Like that, or A long time ago, ago, yeah. So now you just seem like an untouchable guy. You're like in, you're like up here and you have all these um, superstar uh, clientele. Uh, your time now is also different. Do you, how, how do you manage your time now? How does your regular day look like Monday through Friday and then weekends? Do you ever take some time off? What do you like to do for fun? How, how do you relax? Because you work, I'm, I'm sure you work 16, 18 yeah. hours a day, but you could, you could correct me if I'm wrong. How, how's your typical Monday through Friday and weekends? And when do you re release or, or take some time off if you do? You know, I try to <clears throat> hit the gym. You know, that's the most, the, can I have a water also, please, Steph? Yes, uh, I didn't touch it. Okay, that, that's the most important thing for me. Um, mm. As you know, our boy Wes yeah. uh, was a big inspiration. You know, because I, I got on the phone with him and he was like, get in the gym, get in the gym, get in the gym early. I don't care when you go, get in the gym. I said, well, Wes, what day do you take off? He said, I don't take off. He goes, I go to the gym every single day. I'm in tune with my body. If you're in tune with yourself and you have the commitment to be in the gym, you're going to be what? In better shape. Yeah. But if you're consistent at the, your gym life and you look like yourself, you look in shape, you're ready to go, you're going to be consistent in your work life. It's all part of the discipline. I told Wes, Wes, I don't want to be a trainer. He said, I know. It's perfect. But guess what? You want to be in shape, right? Yes. You want to be more successful, right? Yes. You want to have discipline, right? Wes doesn't drink either. Yeah, I know. I don't I, I don't drink either. So I, I, I picked up so many things from people like yourself and people like Wes, and I just try to apply them in my daily life. But going to the gym will be the first most important thing i try to go in the morning if my morning is jammed i go at night or in the afternoon or whenever i can i try to do something exercise don't you hate working out in the nights though That's yeah, yeah i'm smoked like i'm smoked yeah i'm yeah. smoked i'm done i i love to get it in in the morning cause start your day off the best church on sunday i try to get that in is most important you know wasn't for god i wouldn't be here if i can't go to church in person if i'm traveling i stream it online you know, I like to do a little bit of quiet time, read a little bit of the Bible in the morning, get my mind right. But I jump, I jump right in. A lot of people say, you know, don't look at your phone, you know, stay away from the screen time, this and that. The life that you and I live, that doesn't apply. It doesn't apply to me. It doesn't apply to you. The minute we're running and our brain's going and we've got some coffee and some breakfast and your blood flowing, of course, yeah. after a workout, I, I dive right in. Yeah. I dive right into the emails, the yeah. calls, the follow-ups, and it's twenty-four-seven. There's no, there's no days off. Not I try to not not even like really weekends, except when you go to church. No, right? yeah, Sunday, you know, it's the Lord's Day. I try to keep that as relaxed as possible, yeah. but I'm always on my phone. I'm always talking to a potential client. Yeah. Wherever I'm at, even if I'm at church, I may see someone that I know yeah, that yeah, yeah. may want to put a deal together so it's it's always you're always on the go and and that's part of being an entrepreneur and being successful there's not like any days off yeah we okay said so we, we go to miami yeah we're going to miami but we're going to do a mastermind and everybody that we're talking we're talking to we're bringing together that's like us that's like-minded and wants to be successful wants to be in shape wants nothing but positive stuff in their life so i think the most important thing is you just you're just staying after it. resting is important. Taking time with your family is important. Resetting and recharging is very important. But I, I try to go as much as I can and 
and keep that balance. Yeah, yeah, no. So, so by the way, you look in better shape. I don't know if you've been uh, working. Thank out you. Extra, yes. Extra hard. Like, like I lost forty pounds. That that's yes. Really, yeah, yeah. Because because you you look. I saw you and you're like, damn. Like, who's this guy? Is he yeah. gonna fucking punch me in there right now? Because <laughs> uh, because I remember you you had some a little bit of weight on you. Um, and I did and, yes. And, and today when I saw you, cause I haven't seen you. Uh, last time I saw you was when you pulled over. I'm in. Uh, I'm outside of my old office across the street, and that's the oh, last yes. time I saw you in person because. You just pulled up, and that and that's and we'll get into the whole robbery thing because I know security is important now, and and um, I'm just parking there, and I'm and I know they broke into my house, and I'm still like a like kind of looking around, and because California is a, a tough neighborhood, now. it's a tough neighborhood, so, brother. So uh, I pull over, right, and then and then somebody pulls over across, like right next to me, and you're like, hey, hey, hey. And I'm like, what the fuck? Is somebody got to <laughs> pull a gun at me? And then it's you. And then we start talking business. Yes. And it's funny because you're like holding traffic that way. I'm like right here. And we're just having a conversation. But um, I don't know why I'm getting into that. But uh, I, we we're talking about being in shape. Yeah, being in shape. Yeah. yeah so I, that's the last time I saw you. But today when you walked in, like you you uh, you look ripped. Thank you, like, like I could feel like when you gave me a hug, you, you, feel, you felt like a rock. Thank you. Talk about that a little bit, because because does that have to do anything with your recent success? Has that helped you mindset wise? 100%. Because I know you're you're very confident and you uh, you make a lot of money, but what has that that done to you? Your nutrition and your workout schedule that you've been in, in, included like doing you, now. You know, I had to do my physical um, for my show on Discovery Plus Million Dollar Wheels, and you know, I went in. I had to do a stress test, and I was like doing great at work i have this television show everything is going great with my family every i'm like man i'm 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 on top of it and i was still working out but i wasn't as healthy as i should have been and the doctor was like man you gotta you gotta really like you know get in shape you gotta get dialed in and i started studying people like yourself you know running two three times a day watching wes all of these people that are my friends and mentors i'm just like man like i can I can improve here. I have everything there is to have, but I still have room for improvement. Yeah. I love watching your videos. You're talking, running on the treadmill, then doing another workout, then doing another walk around the block. And I was like, man, I, that's what I need to be doing. I wanted to inspire to be better. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I really applied myself and I went from 200 to 160. Wow. wow. Yeah. But I had to get serious. Yeah. You know, you talk yeah. about that a lot, like it, it's a 10 year plan. Like with anything that you want to be successful with, it takes real hard work and dedication mm -hmm. every single day. You have to really want it. You have to eat clean. You have to drink lots of water. Like you said this morning, you have to, you know, uh, do your cardio like you do every day. Yeah. You have to hit the weights. It's, it, it's just like in business. It's a bunch of different stuff. Yeah that you have to do to try to be the best. Yeah. And it changed my life completely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. And, and then also you haven't drank for how long? 16 years. 16 years. Yeah, not a so, drop. So talk about that a little bit because a lot of people, I thought you were like a party animal when, when I, like I thought you were a party animal. I thought you, cause you're always in the best events. Like and hanging out with always, the coolest people. Yeah. And the people you hang out with, a lot of them like to drink. They and, love to and drink. a lot of them like to do other yeah. stuff too. But, but you, um, <laughs> You haven't drank in 16 years. How do you yeah. not drink in 16 years being around all these people and, and Laker games courtside? How do you not drink and how has that helped you? And did you drink a lot before or, or, or why, why did that happen? You know, I grew up in Florida. So, you know, we obviously started drinking at a very young age, Miami, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale. You know, all we, we started drinking probably 13, 14 years old and getting into trouble and drinking was always the gateway that was kind of leading to other s problems mm -hmm. and one of my mentors you know who passed away that has a huge moving a storage company he goes he called me one day he said you know donald trump doesn't drink and i was like huh he goes you know floyd mayweather doesn't drink he goes do you want to be successful and i said yeah he goes well you should stop drinking and he hangs up the phone nibs is one of my best friends in the whole world and I still kept drinking. I was like, oh, you know, forget this guy. Yeah. And I was with, I was with Hector Munoz, big, big boxer in the Latin community, one of my best friends. And we got into some 
huge trouble. And I called my friend the next day and I said, uh, man, you know what? I think what you're saying makes sense. He's like, do you want to be the best at whatever you're trying to do? Do you want to be, do you want people to trust you? Do you want them to, do you want to earn their respect? You want to be on point? You want to be ready to go? Is he goes, if you do this now and apply it to yourself now, you'll be unstoppable. There's nothing holding you back. You meet a guy at a bar or a club or a restaurant and he brings up a deal. Are you going to follow up the next day if you're hungover? Yeah. If you're not, you're going to call him first thing. Hey, what's up with that deal? What's up with that property? What's up with that car? What's up with that plane? Do you still want to do dinner? Yeah. If I'm hungover, I'm not calling you. I'm going to sleep for... You might not remember either. I might not remember. I might not call you. I might not be able to capitalize off the situation. And I just got, I got so sick and tired of that. And I was, it didn't make any sense because I was so young. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And, and I just really wanted to apply myself to be the best version of myself, to cut out all the BS. I still go out. I still go to all the big events. I'm still with people, you know, having, they're having their drinks or whatever, but I'm on point. And it helps now because in the rooms that I'm in and the people that I'm around, it allows me to handle stuff that people may not be able to handle right. or see something that someone may not be able to see or pick up on one thing someone may say in passing to someone else, you know, yeah. so-and-so is looking for a plane or this person may need a car or we have this thing we need some help with tomorrow. And you just have to really be on point. And if you're on point and you apply yourself and the alcohol is out of the picture, it really helps you become the best version of yourself Yeah. for me. Yeah, and plus you hear a lot of what people say when they're drinking. Yeah, that when you're drinking, you kind of like don't even remember what people are saying. So, so what right. I notice is like, you you hear a lot of the vomit and you get a lot of inside yeah. information. And because I'm with people and uh, I was at dinner uh, not too long ago, and and people are like hammered drinking, and they're just like saying stuff. And there are people that are in similar in, in the same industry and other industries that I can make Use, money yes in. and i'm just like i'm drinking water because i'm not i'm not drinking right now but that's great but, Congrats. but, I, but i'm hearing th thank you and, I'm, and yeah. I'm hearing them and i'm just like keep talking and they're like spitting in my face right they're like bah, 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 bah. yeah and and and, and i'm like and i'm it. like keep talking yeah get another one get yeah. another one so and, and then i'm asking like all these questions that i'm going to benefit from and i'm just like yeah yeah okay all right all right mm -hmm. keep spitting on my face yeah. i'm getting more more and more info and then i get home and, and i'm with my wife and i tell her hey I just learned so much right now from <laughs> yeah. these people and I got it for free. They're probably not going to remember that they told me all this stuff. hundred so, percent. So I think that's very impressive. But your your show, let's get into your show. Uh, yes. Million Dollar Wheels. Yes, sir. Um, was because you make all your money. Let, let's before the show. You made all your money you make in cars, right? Cars. Sure. Cars. Some, some airplanes and yachts. <coughs> we're the dealer for cigarette boats for cigarette racing. So we're the only cigarette boat dealer west of the Mississippi. There's five dealers total. So we sell high performance boats, center console boats. We also have wires only aviation where we sell aircraft and then anything automotive, yeah. anything that has to do with cars. So you got me covered for all of that. Anything you anything. need cool, from A cool. to Z. So, so million dollar wheel. So when, when the show starts, when the show, when the show starts, does this, how much does this increase your, uh, your income and overall? Did, did, was this a big help or, or was it just more for getting known around the, around the world, really? Like, how, how did this show come about? How did you get the opportunity to be on national television? And, and how did this impact your, your whole career? That's a great question. I've always had... Uh a passion for entertainment. You know, it's always been a dream of mine to come to LA, to work with celebrities, to produce television shows. I created this show uh, with my producing partner, Jamie Foxx, you know, who I wish us a speedy recovery to right now. Um, and I, I knew that the cars were just a tool that I used to meet people. Yeah. That's and, what I did. Yeah, yeah. The car, like when I, when I see your car on the street every day, and I think, why do I leave my car on the street every day with the tag so that on people, it? So that people like you, remi I remind you of me every day. So I see the driven tag. I see the plate frame. I see the yellow SF90. And it's the best marketing 
I've ever thought of. It's genius, by the way. I'm going to have you talk to my wife because she's always like, why are you getting tickets? Why yeah, it's worth it. So <laughs> just leave, leave the tickets on the car. It's free. It's free. It's like a $100,000 billboard a month. So um, I knew I wanted to be in entertainment. And as I started to meet the biggest producers, the biggest directors, the biggest agents, we all, you know, we became friends. And uh, Jamie was like, you know, your your business is a movie. Like, yeah. it's a show. And I was like, oh, I don't know. <clears throat> he was like, absolutely. He goes, this could be one of the, you know, one of the coolest shows on the planet. He was like, I'm going to put you with my director, Taylor. And I'm going to have you shoot a sizzle reel with him. And he goes, I want you and him to do it together and do all the edits. And when you're ready to give it to me, you bring it to me and I'll give you my notes. So Taylor and I went in my friend's garage, Chris to Will, that owns Morphe Makeup. And we sat down in a chair like this and we ran through, you know, we ran through the sizzle. We got some car content. We went over some deals and we packaged it up. We sent it to Jamie. We did it ourselves. And Jamie's like, okay, make this change, this change, and this change. He goes, it's perfect. We made the changes. He gave us his notes. You know, he's the best. Yeah. He's the yeah. best. He's the best to ever do it. And he's like, okay, I'll have my people I'll set the meetings for you. And so I'll never forget this. They're like, we want, we want to meet with Jamie. Uh, we want to meet with you and Jamie about the show, but we want to do it at 9 a.m. And I'm like, guys, like, just Jamie Fox. I'm not going to tell. He's not. He's like, he's not coming anywhere at 9 a.m. This was during COVID. So I'm like, hey, Jamie, can like, can we do this meeting with Discovery Channel at 9 a.m.? He's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. He's like, I got you. No problem. <laughs> That's what everybody says, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, like yeah, like yeah, friends, yeah. But, yeah. But then you're like, wait, are you sure? And then, so I called, the, I called like, you know, his management, head of security. They're like, 9 a.m.? They're like, brother, you know this guy doesn't get up at 9 a.m.? He's your best friend. This guy works all night. You know, he's in the studio writing movies, music. He's, you know, he, he does. He gets up when he wants. If he's not filming, he's working on something else. Yeah. But he's not getting up at 9 a.m. So I tell Discovery yes at this point. So they're like, okay, great. We're expecting to see Jamie Foxx on this Zoom call. And this is during COVID. The whole country shut down. Yeah. So I go to Jamie's house. And I set up two chairs like this. I call security. I'm like, hey, run to Starbucks, get a caramel macchiato, take it to Jamie. He's like, right away, sir, I got you. Me, me and his security really tight flex. He's like, I said, is he up? He's like, nope, it's not up. So I tell, the, I tell the chef, egg whites, toast, strawberry jelly, run it up there. Nothing. It's like 9 o'clock now, and I have this set up in the living room kind of like this for the Zoom. Nowhere to be found. The Zoom's about to start. I'm panicking. I'm like, man, I'm going to try to sell my show for the first time by myself. Never done a pitch before, never really done Zoom meetings with, you know, executives from networks. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing. Boom, the Zoom turns on. Two chairs, just me. They're like, hey, RD, how are you? This is so-and-so from Discovery Channel and the production company and the other producers. Where's Jamie? I said, oh, yeah, he's coming. He's just, you know, just grabbing some coffee. He'll be, he'll be right down. Nowhere to be found. So I'm like, uh oh so they're like, okay, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. So I run through the pitch deck. I show them the trailer. I'm telling them about all kinds of deals. I'm in full sales mode. I'm saying this deal, that deal. You know, we worked with this celebrity. This happened with this celebrity. They're like, oh, you know, that's cool. You know, we'll, let, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll let you know. And I'm just like, I'm about to close the laptop. And I look over and I'm like, man, I can't believe he didn't come. I look over. He st was standing there the whole time like this, drinking the coffee. <laughs> and he That's goes, funny. he goes, man, that was, he goes, that was a good pitch. He goes, you're good at it. He, he goes, I've done a lot of pitches. He goes, that was a good pitch. And he sits down and he goes, now let me tell you about RD. And the whole, like 20 people on this Zoom, their jaws drop. And so he starts telling them about some deals that we've done together and they they were like don't take he, this he's a close he's a super close, oh right? there's nobody better yeah best storyteller best actor you know best in music best all-around guy i've ever met my entire life he gets on the zoom 
tells him a 30 minute story and they say do not take this anywhere else we want to do this with you so we had amazing partners at discovery we partnered with those guys right away and and jamie and i co-created the show together and executive produced it together so that was one of the first projects that i executive produced and uh we and we and we released it last year so it was a it was a lot of fun dude that's awesome man yeah that's awesome that the power of relationships right yes the power of relationships power of relationships it's all about who you know now now rd social media so like i'm i'm pretty um uh, you know pretty known on social media however i don't have a show on tv yet now when you were on uh you were you were big on social media but when you got into tv did that uh how much more did that grow your business when you got into tv is that is that the next level once you become big on social media you want to get on tv you know that's a great question i didn't know how big it was until i was walking down the street in france for the film festival with jamie and i f had forgotten about the show it had come out and it was like right when episode three was coming out or four and we're walking down the street in france and people are coming up to me asking to take pictures with me and i'm with jamie and jamie is just he's just looking over like man i told you he goes i told you we had we had two boat one boat pulled up next to us and they go hey where's wires only is he there we want to talk to him about the show and i'm thinking man i'm a, a guy from florida that is not supposed to be here that was able to work on my networking and get to the next level and now i'm here and these people have seen my show so to answer your question, the power of streaming, the power of marketing yourself, Instagram, social media, and television is the next level. Now I go places and people know me everywhere. It's insane. Yeah. Like I, I forget sometimes, you know, I go to the gym. They're like, oh, my son's a huge fan. Can you do a happy birthday video or can you come here? Can you do this? And, you know, now we're doing speaking events and all kinds of, you know, different stuff. And the, the, the most fun part about it is the people that i meet you know yeah from it yeah. it's been it's been amazing you know getting to meet people getting to help people getting to work with people it's been super exciting but the the show was life-changing yeah that's awesome and your your exotics uh, you, you have clients like kim kardashian i i, I want to talk a little bit about the, the delivery you did because the color was kind of uh, off right but you'll, t you'll tell me about that yeah but but um also, I, I think uh, I think a uh, Drake, I th and also Kanye, and, and and many others. What what are some uh, crazy stories on some of these big celebs that you've <laughs> done cards? Because I, I I know the I know s people know about certain those that I mentioned. Do you have any other one that you haven't talked about yet that uh, yeah was, was a little crazy? I mean, I was I was laughing with my friend Anthony. He's been my friend for ten years. He has a you know one of the best security companies in in, in the game and we've he's seen it all i've seen it all we've both worked with you know some of the biggest celebrities in the world done some of the craziest deliveries that you could ever imagine from you know to jamie to kim to tom holland jay balvin we got a top secret project right now for bad bunny benito yeah. that's happening as we speak that is insane um and i don't know they're they're all crazy yeah every single one of them is crazy you know, a crazy one that we did do, um, which you'll love because it's a Latino gang, uh, is we bought a La Ferrari from Drake, the yellow one that I used to, I used to drive at, oh, okay. at our building. Yeah. And that car came from Drake. I bought it with like 500 miles. Big shout out to Drake. And uh, one day I get a call and it's Jay Balvin. So good. And he's like, he's like, hey, what's up? It's Jose. And I'm like, I'm like, how'd you get me? How'd you get my number? He's like, oh, you know, my friend in Florida is friends with you, and I want to buy this law Ferrari. So I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, I'm gonna send my, uh, f you know, my best friend out to look at it. So this guy comes out, you know, big guy covered in tattoos. He's like, busting my chops. I'm like, yo, relax. I take him to lunch. There, we inspect the car. He gives us, you know, like a five hundred thousand dollar deposit, and he goes, okay, I'm gonna take the car. So we um, go into COVID, you know, this is like a $4 million car. We go into COVID and Trump comes out and announces, hey, the country shut down. 
but we haven't closed. I just have the deposit. Now I'm panicking. I'm like, oh my God, the, the, you know, life is over. What am I going to do? I can't carry this car for that long. We're gonna, the country's going to be shut down. No one's going to be buying exotic cars. People are stocking up on toilet paper and paper towels, not La Ferraris. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so I'm like, man, what? I'm done. So I called Jay Bowen. I'm like, hey, listen, like, I call his manager and I said, listen, I need you to pay for the rest of the car ASAP because they just closed down the country. He goes, I know. He goes, we're done. We're not, we're not buying that car anymore. I said, yeah, absolutely, you are. I have your deposit, one hundred percent. He goes, no, you need to return the deposit. And he's like yelling at me, screaming at me. So I called Jay Balvin on Facetime. I said, hey man, you know the country is shut down. I need you to close on this car, or I'm keeping your deposit. And he goes, you're not keeping. You told him that. Yeah, I told him it's going to help me through COVID. And he goes, you're not keeping nothing. He goes, bro, send me my car. And he hangs up the phone. I don't hear anything for like two days. I can't reach anybody. I wake up, I think on the second day, and the money was in my account for the whole purchase price. Huge relief. So now I send the car to Miami. We get it to Miami, and I'm like, oh, man, my job is done. My friend that is his best friend goes, no, this car's going to Columbia. It's not going to Miami. This guy lives in Columbia. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. It's COVID. It's a La Ferrari. And I'm not dealing with anybody in Colombia. That just doesn't even sound right. I said, you speak Spanish. You need to handle this. He goes, absolutely not. He goes, you need to handle this. It's your car. It's your job. It's your client. Figure out getting the car to Colombia, to Medellin. Oh, wow. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He's like, I'm dead serious. Hangs up. Jose calls me FaceTime. Hey, make sure you have the car here ASAP. ASAP. You know, this is where I live. Blah, blah, blah. I said, Brother, don't you want to keep the car in the States? He goes, no. I'm building a huge, he's a big Ferrari collector, loves Ferraris like us. He goes, I'm building a huge compound with all these different Ferraris and, you know, all of my art and everything I like, you know, top secret. Yeah. He doesn't ever talk about any of this. He doesn't show any of his stuff. Very humble and amazing guy. One of my best friends. He says, get this car to Colombia, and he hangs up the phone. So now I have to figure out getting a $4 million car from Miami to Cartagena, to Medellin. You, you you have like the movie, like Mission Impossible. You this was Mission Impossible and it's COVID. So nobody wants to work. Everyone has the mask. No truck drivers are available. Shipping is very limited. So I finally get in touch with someone in Cartagena, someone in the Everglades or the port where the ships come in and I figure it all out. So it has to go in a container on a boat to Cartagena then it has to be flatbedded from Cartagena to Medellin and then to his house. And remember, like, I wanted to just say, hey, I'm done. Like, this is this is not it. And that was probably, it cost you extra money or, or was? Very expensive. Taxes and everything things. you could imagine. So you lost money on this deal or you made money? I made money. And funny story is he bought the car and he made a million dollars. Oh, wow. Because the car went up in value so yeah. much. He did so well. But So I, I figure out shipping the car there. The battery is dead now. I'm trying to tell these guys in Spanish how to jump a La Ferrari, which is a <laughs> hybrid, in Colombia. So I'm figuring out I'm going to have to get on a plane to go to Cartagena because the car got there on the ship, and now it's dead. They can't get it out of the container. And now it's viral. If you Google it, you'll see pictures of it sitting in the grass in Cartagena. And there's like, there's like one little truck that they drove it, got it started finally, and drove it up on with like two by fours, you know, so it wouldn't hit, and got it on the truck and drive it all the way to his neighborhood. We get it to his neighborhood, and there's speed bumps in the neighborhood that were so big that the car couldn't go over them, even with the lift up. They had to remove all the speed bumps in the neighborhood, wow. replace them all, just so we could get the car to his house. And so that was a, one of the most insane deals I've ever done. So if he wants to drive the car, how, how does he do that? Does he have to, he can't get it out of his compound? He can now because they replaced all the speed bumps and he paid for the whole neighborhood wow. to get new speed bumps. And then he drove the car like once and then called me and was like, let's sell the car. And then a guy paid him a lot more than what he paid. Yeah. <laughs> and so we shipped the car back to the States yeah. and now the car belongs to a guy in Miami and it's there. Wow. So over it's the not that car. This is this is a funny story actually. The day before the closing, 
There was a LaFerrari that's brought up on the screen. There was a royal family here that had a yellow LaFerrari also. The car he was buying was yellow. And if you saw the video of it doing donuts going around the neighborhood yeah, in Beverly yeah. Hills and it like blew up the motor, he thought right before the closing that that was the car. Yeah. Thank God it had different wheels, but that almost blew up the entire deal. Because it would be like, yo, if there was a, a, a yellow SF90 that went up in smoke, I would be like, hey, Albert, was that your car? I'd be like, no, that wasn't mine. Mine's here at the office. But that almost blew up the deal also. Yeah. There were so many things that happened yeah. where I got deal fatigue, where I was just like, man, this, is, this isn't it. But I just kept swinging. When you're driving that kind of car in Colombia, is it safe? Or he, does yeah. he have a bunch of troops no, following him? He around? doesn't have any. No, he has zero security. Really? Zero. Why? They call him the son of Medellin. So they everybody there loves him. Loves him. him. Loves him. But no, no uh, kidnapping or anything like that in Colombia. No, there is. But I mean, that's where he's born and raised. But he's just like that. Yeah, I mean, he lives right in the heart. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He's the real deal. So, do you do you operate mainly from California or are you in another state? No, worldwide, anywhere. What's your main residence though? California, Miami, go back and forth a lot. Yeah. Yep. Because, like, business-wise, is it uh, – because I know you get a lot of business from California, right? Is the California your biggest uh, business state or – No, it's – I mean, it's it's probably 80% internet. Really? It's 80% internet. You so, know, we, so for tax purposes, you're you're all set up well and all that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Got it. We'll we're, talk about that yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're set up nicely. But um, all, all of the clients now – you know, that's the beauty about social media and the importance of social media and the internet. Yeah. If everyone can focus on their brand and whatever they are doing, whatever their career is, use that social media like you preach. Use that social media to your advantage yeah. for your company. Well, I don't have a company. I have my personal one. Well, that's your brand. Yeah. Use that every single day as much as possible. Stories, yeah. post, and grow that and continue to grow that and continue to grow that because that is the best marketing tool for me that has got me so many clients and so many deals yeah i've called i've closed multi-million dollar deals from in on instagram on a dm for free yeah without one advertising dollar that's crazy yeah so kim kardashian i, I know you delivered a a car and the color the, everything was perfect except the color um have you delivered a lot of cars to the kardashian family they're the best yeah. absolutely they're, how, how, they are, how are they in real in real person because like on TV, you know they they're, they're they're beautiful. They're they're geniuses. Um, when when you meet them in person, are are they are they like sweethearts? Are they uh, amazing are people? They? They're about their business. Yeah, you know they're very sharp and they got great people around them. Uh, but they're great people. They, you know they're very nice people. They love cars and you know they've all they've all done very well for themselves. But they're very very nice people. Who's know? more into cars from the sisters? Oh man, uh, you know Kendall is into classic cars. Kylie's into, you know, every kind of car there is. Kim probably has the most cars, probably, Kim, yeah. Kylie, yeah. you know. But, yeah. you know, Corey, Chris, Scott. Scott, you know, has, I don't know, 10, 20 cars at a time. Yeah. You know, he his house looks like a dealership. And uh, that whole family's amazing. They've all been super supportive. They all love cars. They're super nice. They're You know, they're just normal people. Yeah. They're very successful people, yeah. but they're, you know, they're normal people easy to work yeah. with. Uh a few a few key things. You're you're um you you made it to a level where you're you're super famous and it's making you more money like like I I want to get to your level. I want I want to I want to get to your famous. level. I want an office like this. <laughs> so, so so when you when you get to that level, is it worth it? making more money being super famous in regards to like now people wanting to attack you more people maybe there's you have to watch out for robbers you got to watch out for like crimes and everything that not, not now it, it's different because before maybe you could go uh anywhere by yourself now everything everywhere you go you got it's kind of like a strategy okay i'm gonna get it's in and strategy. out i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and i know it comes it, it, like for example uh, let, let's say jeff bezos and elon musk they can't go anywhere and and they they have to be very very secure is is it what are the pros and cons and is it worth it absolutely you know the first thing that i did was surround myself with people like anthony uh, who has the best security company in the country who's worked with every big celebrity there is from you know rocky to rihanna to kim to kanye 
um, and he's surrounded me with the right team. And these professionals know how to move, know how to advance sites, know what to check for. And they make sure that you're covered and they teach you everything there yeah. is to know. And it's very important. You know, you just, um, you just have to be very uh, strategic on your moving and make sure you have a detail with you or, or, or around and, and you just have to be conscious of your surroundings because if you're famous or not, it's still, you know, a crazy world, you yeah. know? Yeah, but it sure opens a lot of doors, relationships. It does. Oh, yeah, no, it does for sure. You know, and it, it comes with the territory. And as you grow, you know, you just. Yeah, because that's how you got your clientele. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're the biggest, you're the biggest. And in, in when you think about car exotics now and now planes, I don't know how, how recent you've been doing the, the jets. You also yachts, right? Yep. Um, when you think about that, it's it's wires only. Like, I don't think there's anybody anybody Thank close you. to your level. And then when uh, there are a lot of people that want to be the next wires only, though. So just like any industry, they get saturated. There's a lot of people trying to be like Albert. There's a lot of people trying to be like Kim. So how 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 do you, how do you see these people that are that are starting to buy certain exotics, but at, at a smaller level? How hard is it? Is it realistic? Uh, what would be your advice to them if they want to be the next wires only and get to this level? But right now, maybe they're starting flipping a 488 or maybe a, maybe an F8, maybe or maybe even a 458. Like how how what advice would you give them so that they can get to your level and build the clientele that you have? Because the clientele that you have now is a, a dream clientele and mm -hmm. you don't start with these clients. You start with when, when you bought your first Rolls Royce at an auction. So what's your advice to them? Is it realistic? And if it is, how, how many years is it gonna take for them to, to grow? It takes at least 10 years to do anything great. It takes at least 10 years. I bought my first car at an auction when I was 16 years old for six or $700. It was a Chevy Caprice that I thought had 34,000 miles on it. And it had 345,000 miles Man. on it. It was a taxi cab. I opened the doors. The outside was blue. The inside was yellow. I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do? I drove the car off the auction lot. It broke down. I called my friend's dad. He helped me change the distributor cap and charged up the Freon. And I put it in the paper back then because there was no, it wasn't really online. And a guy called me and he, I said, this is a V6. I'm telling you now it was a taxi cab. He goes, great. I own a cab company. When can I come see it? He came over and he bought the car that same day. I doubled the money that I invested in the car and I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm hooked. Yeah. But it took me from 16 to now, I'm 39, uh, pursuing this passion constantly and trying to be the best at my craft, surrounding myself with good people. So you started at 16 years old? Yes, yeah, 16. 16 years old. That's when I flipped my first car. Yeah. 16, 17. Yeah. And what I'm doing now is surrounding myself with mentors with people that are doing better than myself that I can learn something from. And we're offering a mentor program now where you can be a part of our inner talk, circle. Talk about that. Talk yeah. about that so, so that you can tell people where to get it and where to where to follow you. Right now, we're, you know, you can follow us at Wires Only uh, on Instagram or check out our website, wiresonly.com. And we've been getting so many requests about having masterminds and courses and, and teaching up and coming entrepreneurs on how we did it in our tips for success so a week ago we launched our mentorship program has done very well we signed up almost 75 students and we're working with those students in in group uh settings on zoom or in person and then individually uh individual one-on-one -on -one. so we if you are interested you can dm us mentorship or dm us coaching you can pick a program that works best for you. You get access to uh, masterminds. You get access to networks and events like the one you're having, the driven event that we're going to be at, which we're super excited about, that we're bringing our, our staff to. We're going to bring all of our sales guys. We're going to get everyone fired up to come to that. Yeah, by the way, I can't wait, and thank you for uh, for being part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait. I look forward to it. And uh, we're, we're giving people access to us directly for the first time. You may have a, I just signed up a guy with a mortgage company. He goes, I, I close 500 grand a month in mortgages. I said, that's great. I think you could do better. He's in Colorado, Utah, and Arizona. 
but he probably doesn't know that you and I are very close and that you guys could do business together. Yeah. But I asked him, I said, what's up with your social media? He goes, oh, I don't really use social media. I said, you should be on there every day talking about rates, loans, pricing, whatever you can talk about and use that as a tool. He goes, oh man, that's great. I'm so happy I signed up. We did our first mentorship call together and we're working on building his TikTok, his Instagram, his YouTube, and just uplifting his, his social media to get him more business. So we have clients signing up that own mortgage companies, car dealerships, they're in sales, uh, attorneys, you know, accident attorneys, whoever, for any business. Yeah. And you can learn about fitness, you can learn about sobriety, you can learn about not drinking, you can learn about uh, health, you can learn about working with celebrities, how to act around celebrities, hospitality, you can learn about high ticket item sales, and you can just surround yourself with people that are doing well. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is, what we are doing is we're building a network. So if I know Albert and you know somebody and that person knows Eric and that person knows Bradley and then we know Wes Watson, we're all building an unstoppable group of people that all want to advance in life. Yeah, yeah. Whatever your career may be, you could be a window tent guy, you could be a mortgage guy, you could be a car dealer, you could be a security company. But inside that network, we can all use each other's businesses to lift each other up and take someone to the next level. I need a mortgage. I can hit Albert. I can hit my other guy in, in, in Utah if he needs something or the mortgage guys, you know, the best. Yeah. If I need someone that wants to get in shape or wants to uh, get some motivation, I kick him over to West, let him handle them. Yeah. And so we're trying to build up our network of, of clients and students that can all rely on each other for different um, purposes and products and to learn more yeah. and to surround themselves with people that are like-minded and wanting to do better in life. Yeah, th th that's awesome. And, and I see you not as a, you're not a, just a car guy. You're, no. you're an entrepreneur, yeah. like you're a business guy. So s sticking in the same industry for that long, 16 years to 39, like that's a track record. So all the business skills that you learned and acquired, you can, I feel you like, Tell me if I'm wrong. I think if you decide to open any business in any industry, you'll make it a hit because you know the basic business, the fundamentals, right? 100%. So like you're you're like you're a business coach and you can help anybody with a lot of things. Sure. So so if you haven't signed up yet, sign up, reach out, send you a DM coaching yeah, or master, coaching, mentorship. mentorship. You know, we we allow people that sign up, they get to come to our showroom which is private, it's on yeah. Wilshire and Doheny. They get to come to the showroom, they get to take pictures with all the cars. They wanna start a Bugatti, they can sit in it, start it, touch it, feel it. They're like, oh yeah, that's cool, what's the point of that? Well, have you seen a Bugatti before? Yeah. No, maybe you may have one someday. Yeah, You have to see one to think about yeah, yeah, one, yeah. to know what it's like, to look at it, to touch it, to yeah. have it in your mind. One story I'll never forget about you, which I did the same thing, was your dream board. Yeah. Was the Bugatti. Yeah. Was the presidential or the yacht master, yeah, right? Yeah, the yacht master. The yacht master, master too, right? Yeah. And you have all this stuff laid out. And you going back 10 or 15 years ago, whenever that was, and when you guys had the office and the apartment and you and your wife were building up your brand and now you're at the top, you know, floor in beautiful, you know, uh, LA, you have to envision that stuff. Yeah, cast a vision. You have to cast a vision. And so we're out allowing all of our students to come to our office, take pictures with the cars, ask us questions, do Q and A's, come to our events and, you know, lift each other up. And I really love it because I'm, I'm actually getting the chance to help people and the questions that That's they're right. asking are great. Yeah. They're great questions. Yeah. I love it. And I want to end it with the NFT, but before that, just two quick questions. What is the next car I should get? Should it be La Ferrari or Bugatti? And then also what's your favorite car and your favorite jet? Okay. The first question is for you. Which car should you get next? Yeah. Oof, the La Ferrari or Bugatti? Yeah. I think you would love the La Ferrari. I know you're a Ferrari guy. You've been a Ferrari yeah. guy forever. Um, I think the La Ferrari would be a good car Cause, for you. Because you know when the dream board, when you when you create a dream board, yes. you outgrow the dream board. Up, uh, you, you outgrow it. So back then I wanted to have a Yacht, a yacht Master and it was a two-tone. And and then uh, I wanted a Bugatti, but I never I didn't know much about cars. Like I just I wanted a, a Ferrari and four five eight was like the first time I got a, a car that was like wow it's my dream car. But then after that you're like okay what's next? So you continue to like upgrade and 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 aim higher. And that always happens when you create a dream board. It's not gonna be your dream board forever. You're gonna outgrow it and you're gonna create 
even bigger targets because I'm sure you you're not you're not happy where you are right now. You want more. I don't think you're like, oh, you know what? I made it. I'm gonna take it easy right now. You I, you you seem like a very hungry guy. Absolutely. And, and I, I could see that serious face that you're like, I'm gonna do more. Like I'm not. This is just the beginning. You're 39, bro. Yeah, 100. <laughs> percent Yeah, but but uh, so you said you said uh, I said La Ferrari, La Ferrari La Ferrari. for you. Yeah, the Ferrari is what La Ferrari means, and I think that would be a good one for you. And is there gonna be like a next La Ferrari? There is. Yeah, yeah. there's an SP3 uh, that's up. Some of them are out already, which is a very special Ferrari that's beautiful. You know, it's how much my is that? Favorite car. I think they're around 2.6 million. And then there's uh, the La Ferrari replacement. Then there's the um, there's talks of uh, VS SF90, hmm. which is a very special race car version of the SF90, which is going to be really cool. We got to talk about that. And then what's your, fa what's your favorite, favorite car and your favorite jet? Uh, my favorite car for sure is the A12 Competition. Um, and uh, I just got that car. It's a very limited car that I, w um, I got from Ferrari, which is a, a V12, you know, which is fast, a lot of fun. And uh, favorite jet for sure is Gulfstream. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, you like can't beat one. it. And workhorse. So so let's get into your NFT to close out. Yep. Uh, NFT. So you have an NFT. Can you talk about it? Like what what's what's this big um this big uh <clears throat> shocking uh it's like creating a bus on the yep. internet because I know you have this NFT, I know there's some jets involved. How does this work? Yeah, so the company that we partner with is called ETH Jets. So the NFT is just uh there's three different levels, you know, a gold, silver, and platinum. And in the, obviously the NFT is a cool artwork of a plane pulling up and a car pulling up, but yeah. it's it's actually a jet membership. It's a jet membership that's on a smart contract. And what ETH Jets did and why I like them so much is they went in and they partnered uh, with all the empty leg operators for all the jet companies throughout the, throughout the country. And they said, okay, look, if your planes are going empty, so say we come back from Vegas, the plane has to go back to Vegas. They've already charged us for the, right. the the round trip. Yeah. So it's going back empty. So they cut deals with all the operators to get access to their empty leg rates. They've got a uh, a Premier One A, which is a six passenger light jet that goes to Vegas for three grand. So if you're a member, you can get six of your friends, and you can go to Vegas for three grand on a, on a jet. And so the NFT is a smart contract, which is a jet membership that you can transfer at any time. I can sell you mine. You can sell me yours and you can buy it with Ethereum and it gives you an app And on that app, which comes out in a couple months. It will say you're in Beverly Hills. It will geotag all the empty leg jets in Beverly Hills or say Van Nuys, Van Nuys yeah. going to Aspen, Cabo, Miami. And as a member, you can click on it and book it, you know, right away. And it's not shared. You get the entire jet. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. So, so, bro, I'm really proud of this. Uh, of Thank you, you. Uh, we got to make a part two. Oh yeah, absolutely. Two. We got. Uh, you, we, you know what we should do is we should do one at the office. Yeah, let's do that. We come by yeah. and, and check yeah. out the cars. Maybe we have a celebrity guest, you know, pop in and uh, and share a little let's story. Do it. Tell me when, and I know I'm gonna see you at the business bootcamp driven. Yep, I can't and, wait for that. Super and, exciting. And I'm very. Uh, very happy for you. Very happy. You. Uh, I, I think real recognizes real. That's, Absolutely. That, 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 that's, that's a fact. And when you have your friends uh, that are winning big, support them. I, I think this is a good thing that, that I want to bring up. Like if you have a friend and, and they have a service, pay for their service. You don't ask friends for discounts. Like if your friend is doing something and, and, and you want to support him, pay him. You should pay him more. And, and, and vice versa because that that's how it works and and uh it's it, when you get more successful uh we were talking about it about this before your circle kind of gets smaller and smaller and you got to be able to protect it and i know you talk a lot about burning bridges and relationships how important that is and Very and uh, and thank you so much um brother rd my pleasure, it was a pleasure thank you for having me see you guys at the driven event that's right